bring on Michael Hanley here, who's the CEO of Satera Biopharma ticker Stab. One of the best tickers we've got, I think, in this entire market right now. Uh, how are we doing today, Michael? Good. How are you doing, Spencer? Doing great, doing great. We have your slides. I see them, guys. Let's bring them up. There they are. I'm going to step back here. Michael, the floor is yours. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us today. And I'd like to introduce you to Satera Biopharma, uh, NASDAQ ticker STAB. Uh, for looking statements, as you can see before us, and, and you can read them. And then I'd like to go into a general overview and history of the company. Uh, Statera Biopharma is a combination of two companies, uh, primarily, and a third company as well. Um, we were formed uh, this summer through a merger of Cleveland Biolabs that spun off from the Cleveland Clinic in the early 2000s. We also uh, were a part of a company called Cytocon that spun off from another public company called Immune Therapeutics in 2014. Those combined uh, also with a company called Inquest to form what we have today as Tatara Biopharm. Tatara Biopharm is a very interesting platform uh, using an advanced immunomodulatory multi-component system. Well, what that means is we're polypharmacological. So our drugs uh, basically target more than one receptor subtype to get our desired outcome. And our focus right now is on immune-related diseases. So this company is launched with 21 uh, different indications and eight different assets. And we're gonna talk about our immune platform and primarily our four leading assets in our drug development efforts at this point. So what do we do? We restore immune health. How is this different from other companies? Uh, we, instead of suppressing the immune system, we focus on bringing the immune system back up to a normal healthy level. Uh, we don't overactivate the immune system or result in hyperactivity of uh, cytokines, which can lead to damage and inflammation. Uh, so we believe we have a novel platform, a novel way about thinking about immunotherapies, and uh, we're currently advancing several drugs uh, in late stage um, clinical trials. And uh, we look to be expanding and broadening our capabilities and platform uh, through the development of novel molecules that will continue to bring up through the pipeline and uh, execution of our late stage clinical programs get those to market. So we're a very exper experienced leadership team. As you can see on the right, um, we've uh, come from large pharma and big biotech. Um, we've been doing drug development as a management team uh, in other companies for the past 20 years or more. And uh, we're very knowledgeable in how we advance drugs through the clinic and into the marketplace. Um, healthcare investors, we have some very good institutional investors that are back the company uh, on the public side and also on the private side over the past 12 uh, to 18 months. And we look to expand our relationships uh, with uh, a variety of CROs, academic groups like the Hoya Institute of Immunology, uh, Loma Linda University Medical Center, and others that will lead to uh, better outcomes for our patients. Uh, the leadership team, as you can see in front of you, a uh, very experienced team, um, launched many drugs, uh, Vast and Tarceva um, are just a few of those. Uh, you can see the, the drugs below. Um, we've had experience in, in uh, development programs, clinical negotiations with the FDA, um, with the EUA, and uh, other groups um, outside the, uh, the U.S., um, including the EMA and, and Asia. Um, MHLW uh, regulatory bodies. So our, our expansive knowledge, I think, helps us um, find more efficient pathways for our drugs uh, through the clinic and into the marketplace. So rethinking immunotherapies, what does that mean? So our approach is, is very unique from what we've seen across the board. Um, we're developing drugs that specifically are designed uh, to basically bring the immune system back into a homeostasis. And what do I mean by that? Our immune system is very capable on its own of uh, killing infections, attacking cancers, um, but when the immune system is overactivated, as we sometimes see in autoimmune disease, we get a negative response in the tissue, whether it's Crohn's in, in the large intestine and the GI tract or uh, the nervous system and multiple sclerosis, um, a hyperactive immune system leads to poor outcomes in patients in, in autoimmune disease. Vice versa, when your immune system is not active enough, you get things uh, such as infections and cancers that come about. And our drugs specifically are targeted through several receptor systems, some of note are toll-like receptors, um, as well as opioid receptors, bring about an, a natural restoration of the immune system um, to a fully functioning immune system that can then operate, modulate, and then uh, do what it's meant to do, which is destroy cancers and not attack its own tissue. 
So our pipeline focus, as I said earlier, through the combination of uh, Cleveland Biolabs and Cytokine, we have uh, a lot of indications, a lot of programs, and a lot of assets. We're focusing our attention on three different buckets. Autoimmune disease, and our first program will be Crohn's uh, disease, which is a, a phase three directed uh, program using an oral uh, once a day delivery of, of a drug. Uh, our second bucket will be oncology. It's a pancreatic cancer program um, using an injectable product um, that uh, we'll use in combination with uh, standard of care. And our third bucket will be hematology. Um, we'll be looking for the mitigation of acute um, neutropenia or anemia um, using Intelimid, which is a biologic um, that we will uh, inject and, and hope to stem this neutropenia anemia that you see in typical cancer cases that patients are exposed to large amounts of chemo and radiation. And then underneath those, we have secondary programs as well for autoimmune disease, multiple sclerosis, for oncology, hepatocellular, and for hematology, chronic neutropenia anemia. Great. Our development pipeline, as you can see, is very robust, and we have a lot of late-stage programs and uh, some that I think um, will be coming up uh, shortly uh, in the next 12 to 24 months. But again, I want to lead everyone's focus to our Crohn's program. It's a phase three Crohn's program that we should have first patient in by the end of this year. Um, we're targeting both pediatrics and adults with a oral once a day pill that should induce um, remission in these patients. And hopefully we'll see the data that will support um, also maintenance of the remission as well. And then similarly, pancreatic cancer, uh, probably the second program that we're going to kick off in 2022. And then uh, the hematology studies, which will start in earnest uh, with some of our partners as well. And then we do have a COVID program um, that will be uh, enrolling patients this fall um, using our primary uh, mechanism of action, which is reduction of uh, inflammation or the inflammatory state, and then modulation of a dysfunctional immune system, which you see in SARS-CoV-2 patients. Great, intellectual property is very robust. Um, on this slide, we have over 72 issued or pending patent applications worldwide. Um, these range anywhere from composition of matter to method of use to formulation. And uh, they're also extensive, uh, giving us patent protection um, into the early 2030s, into the early to late 2040s as well. So very comprehensive coverage of all of our intellectual property for our three different programs. For our Crohn's program, I'd like to go into some detail on the actual data that we have developed over the past several years and then what we expect into our phase three program. So a phase two study uh, was initiated several years ago. We had our end of phase two meeting with the FDA this summer. Uh, those data definitively showed that 67% of the patients with once a day oral dosing uh, were reduced or induced into remission. And of those in remission, about 43% had complete mucosal healing via endoscopy. So these are very favorable efficacy and safety profile for this particular drug, almost 2x of that of standard care biologics, which are TNF alpha blockers, um, with very little to minimal side effects as well, too, uh, which was uh, very, very exciting to see considering the side effects you often see in standard care and biological therapy. Um, we also have orphan designation for this, for the PEDS, as there's really no good treatments or therapeutic treatments for pediatric patients with Crohn's disease at this time. And again, to emphasize the point, this is immunomodulatory, not immune suppression. Um, so our drug doesn't induce um, a suppressed immune system, which results in side effects, such as infections and cancers, which I think is a very large benefit for the patient population. Great. Uh, STAT-401, which is our pancreatic cancer drug, has shown previously in a phase two clinical study um, when compared to gemcitabine, which is standard of care, as a monotherapy, a significant increase in length of life. And these are stage three, stage four non-receptible tumors. So these are basically hospice patients. And you're trying to extend quality of life and length of life. And what you see on the graph, the bar graph on the right-hand side, is that even as a monotherapy, we're able to extend life, but in conjunction with gemcitabine, we had significant statistical increase, uh, almost 4x of just gemcitabine alone. And what this shows is that uh, our phase uh, two study that we're going to initiate over the next year should result in a significant benefit, clinical benefit to the patient population. Um, we saw 53% benefit in this patient population in a phase two study, and we intend uh, to re 
we initiated a phase two study by multiple, multiple doses. We had a single dose in the first phase two, and we think we can even get better outcomes with a uh, dose ranging study as well. Great, so to wrap this up, what we see as potential catalysts for Statera Biofarm in the next 12 to 24 months. Um, very straightforward. Uh, this fall, we intend to initiate a COVID study uh, using one of our immunomodulatory drugs. We also intend to initiate our phase three COVID, or sorry, Crohn study. Um, that should uh, start with pediatric patients. And then as we enroll pediatric patients, um, we'll start enrolling adult patients um, in the next 12 to 24 months. And then early next year, we intend to initiate our pancreatic cancer clinical trial. Uh, it will be a dose ranging, uh, like I said, early phase two study uh, that will look for dose optimization in stage three, stage four pancreatic cancer patients. And then we continue to move on into the, the early part of next spring. We intend to do a hematology study um, using entolamid uh, for acute neutropenia and anemia in cancer patients that have been exposed to large amounts of chemotherapy and radiation therapy potentially as well, too. Um, we also have a large amount of uh, assets that we're looking to prioritize at this point in time and, and monetize um, that don't fit uh, our current uh, immune homeostatic approach and what our narrative is um, to our shareholder base. And so those we'll see um, news coming out over the next six to 12 months about uh, what we're out licensing and what we continue to develop. Um, we have uh, current academic collaborators, as I said, Lana Linda, La Jolla Institute of Immunology, which will be partners with us in analyzing our drugs in our human populations to determine uh, better optimization of immunomodulatory and you know, immunostatic approaches. And then in the following 12 to 24 months, uh, we would initiate a uh, multiple sclerosis study, probably a hepatocellular study, and get data readouts from those as well. And in addition, probably wrapping up some Crohn's data as top line data, and then moving our COVID program, our hepatocellular and uh, pancreatic cancer programs forward. So I think that in a nutshell is Tetera Biofunnel. We're very proud of our platform, proud of our team, and we have a lot of work uh, cut out for us over the next 12 to 24 months. Uh, uh, looks like next quarter in particular is gonna be an especially busy one for you. Very busy, Spencer, yes. Uh, we're extremely busy, but uh, happy to be busy. How does that end up? I'm just curious, like how does it end up like that where you have all your trials ending at kind of at the same time, near the same time? That was by design, actually. Yeah, okay. we, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we're looking to maximize uh, our value inflection points over a compressed time window. Okay, okay. So uh, we will be watching the wires uh, the, for for headlines, for data readouts, for all those trials uh, we've got coming in in, in Q4 uh, and and also the first half uh, of next year. Michael Hanley, the CEO of Tetera Biopharma. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, 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 we have a couple more minutes. So if we have any questions from the chat, I want to give them uh, the opportunity to, to ask it. Um, and, and I guess that last slide kind of answered my question, which was like, it's always the upcoming catalyst, what everyone wants to know. Um, yeah. And so that last slide was the most important slide to me um, <laughs> because, because, you know, as, as, a, as a person in news, so, so. Uh, I, I guess it, it, of all those trials that, that you've got, you've got data coming uh, next quarter, first half of next year. It, it, is is there one? Can you pick a favorite? Is like is it like picking your favorite kid? I don't know. It is. It is actually. Yeah, you, you, yeah. you love all of them, but you have one favorite. Okay. So the the Crohn's program is probably going to be the most important program for us. I think it really delineates our approach um, to immune homeostasis, and the drugs out there work but they're immunosuppressive in nature. And if our drug has data like it did in phase two, I think we can expect to compete very well against the biological therapies that are out there that really, um, unfortunately, you know, they do help patients, but there's also a high risk of uh, infections and immune suppression, which is not a good thing, especially in this time of COVID. Um, when you've got patients walking around, I think upwards of 1.2 million patients on biological TNF alpha therapy, that are immunosuppressed. Um, so we would love to see great data out of that, get patients uh, on our drug if the FDA approves it, and then uh, get these patients back to a normal, healthy state. Anyway, just to recap again, um, all those data, all, all those trials, those were phase two, the one for the for, for Q4. Uh, Crohn's is a phase three study. Yeah, phase three, phase three. three. Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, we're getting there. We're getting to the end. Gotta That's get to right. that. 
That's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. got a lot of shots on goal, a lot of near-term milestones, and uh, we hope to get our, our Crohn's program all the way through in the next 24 months to commercial. Yeah. I, I think maybe of all the companies today, you uh, you probably do have the most shots on goal right now in terms of uh, near-term uh, you know, data incoming. So uh, again, I, we, we, will, we will have to watch out for that, uh, everyone. Michael Hanley is the CEO of Cetera Biopharma. Tickers up on the screen, stab. I mean, it's also like, again, just hats off for the ticker. Whoever thought of that one was just mwah, beautiful. Uh, and uh, thanks for coming on the Benzinga Smuck Out Conference today. Appreciate it, Spencer. Have a good day. All right, you too.